appreciate it. And thank you to the Impact Foundry. Um, you've been a major, major partners and making a huge difference in our community for a long time. And uh, just grateful to be here. And I think if I'm seeing this right, do I see uh, Joseph, Adi, uh, Dr. Stanley, Megan, and Tom? Yeah, we have around um, 35 folks signed up. So I'm um, hoping they'll trickle in here or we can get the YouTube video out to them as well. Cool. Very cool. Well, um, it's so good to see everyone. I'm seeing the list here and big shout out to Megan Laurie. Uh, Megan Laurie just started at UCP. Uh, we just did a virtual event. I think that was about maybe two weeks ago and uh, I think she's on here. So uh, big shout out. Um, I'll be actually sharing a quick video from UCP. So thanks for joining us, Megan. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Stephen. Uh, real quick, just kind of wanted to give you an opportunity to uh, if you had any questions, to put those into the chat bar, um, feel free. Up oh, there's, I see the thumbs up, Megan. <laughs> Thanks for the love. Uh, so, any questions that you have around digital fundraising or anything specific, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions off the top. Um, I'll definitely share with you quite a few things that I've learned in the past uh, almost a year and a half now. Uh, the first virtual fundraising event that I did was actually April 30th of 2020, which was about six weeks after COVID hit, um, kind of that March 10th time period of 2020. So very quickly, we went into virtual events um, and never looked back. And they've grown and grown and grown. I was literally just got off a call this morning where we're putting together a hybrid event for September. We'll have folks in person as well as online. We'll have watch parties designated for guests at home. Um, and we're putting a bunch of things around that for a hybrid event where we'll have about 100 or 150 people in a room. And we'll have you know as many as probably 50 to 100 online as well. So a lot of things to come that I can share with you if you have questions on that. Um, specifically, what I did before COVID was in-person events. I usually do about 50 to 60 in-person events a year. Uh, where you have about two, three, four hundred people in a ballroom or in whatever venue it might be, and COVID hit and we had to pivot to there. So what I wanted to share with you today was just some things that we learned. And if you are interested in digital fundraising or virtual fundraising events that might potentially help you as you start to look at hybrid um, into the future. So the uh, first and foremost thing with a hybrid event, is to really understand that you're planning two different events. You're planning a virtual event and you're planning an in-person event. However, it it may seem and sound like a lot of like, oh my gosh, this is two events. They There's a lot of synergy that goes into them. And so for example, when you would have a live speaker at your in-person event, that could be a pre-recorded video that is then shown on TV screens to your in-person audience, as well as the folks that are at home. Uh, and it, you know, is a really viable to make that. I was actually literally just on a call this morning where we were talking about the hybrid and how that bidding would work. Um, and then the nice thing is, is I've done 60 something events now, I've 62 or 63, I don't know, but somewhere a little over 60 virtual events. And so I know how the virtual side of it works and how that integrates into in-person, into a hybrid setting. It, with the experience that I've had in the virtual realm, it's pretty simple. Um, be, and I can go over the basics if you wanna chat about that. So feel free to put any questions that you have into the chat bar. I'm sure you'll have a ton of questions. I can, I'm happy to answer any and all that you have um, from how do you market an event? What is marketing strategies? What are some sponsorship strategies? Um, what do we see as the future of events, whether they're hybrid or in-person or virtual, um, how to plan and set those up? So I'm happy to answer anything that you have. Real quick, I was planning to share with you a brief video that would give you an idea of what virtual events looks like. Um, into hybrid and kind of what we've done for the past 18 months. So here is, let's try to share a screen here. I'll share. I'll, I'll let you know about the sound and everything. We can share, we can see your screen. Great. Awesome. You can see my screen, Stephen? Yep. Good to go. 
Awesome. So I won't show you the whole thing. I'll probably just show you 60 seconds, but this will show you behind the scenes of how virtual hybrid events happen. And uh, I'll share with you a little bit more after this uh, quick 30 to 60 seconds. So um, what you saw there was pretty fast. Let me see if I can bring you back here. Can you see me? Are we good? Oh, it's uh, not shared right now. Okay, but can you see me on the screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is a, just a little different. So I haven't used a, this software yet. So cool. Great, Peter. Good to see you. Um, so... Yeah, that was kind of a quick idea for probably 60 seconds. It showed you a lot of different things there. It showed you behind the scenes, uh, virtual. Also in there was a hybrid event. You didn't see the actual people that were in there, but I actually did an event from a church. Uh, it was on a stage where we had a screen in front of me, and then there was about 40 people that were in attendance. Uh, that was a couple months ago. So, And then you saw some watch parties in there. Uh, some people created watch parties at home where they had about 20 people and they had a catered meal um, and they had a YouTube live stream and they're all bidding from their phones. So that's kind of the idea of a watch party. Um, that's something that's been pretty common now for a while. I'm doing two virtual events this week where we have watch parties going on for those. And uh, we got, we're doing a, on Thursday, I'm doing a virtual event for Africa Hope Fund. And they've got watch parties literally all over the world. They have a watch party in the UK, a watch party in um, Panama, and then a bunch of obviously in the United States. So uh, watch parties are a big thing. Uh, and then as we go into hybrid, um, it still has a lot of, there's a lot of upside to hybrid and the online component um, because you're able to reach so many more folks uh, that are maybe potentially weren't able to come or whatnot. Um, and I can share with you more about that if you're interested. So feel free to put any questions that you have in the chat. I'm happy to share anything I can. Uh, Melissa Jensen, it's good to see you. And, uh, looks like we got a couple more folks that are joining us as well. So, um, yeah, great. I love this. Addy, thanks for the question. Uh, what is a watch party? That is a great question. A watch party is where, You'll have um, a YouTube live stream where people are watching the live stream of an event, whether that's a in-person or virtual event. And then you'll have anywhere from two, four, eight, 10, 20 people that are at a home or a venue. I've started to actually have watch parties where people are at restaurants and they you know, reserve a private room at a restaurant. Uh, we've got a couple this week, one's going on at Bennett's in Sacramento. There's going to be a watch party there. Um, a lot of people do them at restaurants now because you get the food there and all of that. But essentially a watch party is where a group of people come together. They're watching a live stream of an event and they're bidding from their phones to either donate towards the live fund to need or bid on the live auction or silent auction items. So hopefully that answers that. I'll briefly share with you an example of a virtual event. And Megan, so grateful that you joined on. I had no idea that you were joining with us today. So this is cool. I'm going to show, uh, let me share my screen here again. Get this share screen, share screen, boom. Awesome. Steven, want to let me know if you see the screen? Good to go. Sweet. Um, so this is actually a quick, I'll kind of breeze through, probably show you 60 seconds of this. This was from the UCP uh, virtual event that I just did with Megan Laurie, who's on the call with us today. Um, this gives you an example of what virtual looks like, and then I'll start to transition into what hybrid looks like. So here's a, you'll see a live stream, you'll get a YouTube link, and this is something that it might look like. We're here! <laughs> I thought I was gonna 
start. Let's start over. Can we start over? Are you are you ready, Freddie? I've been waiting to say, are you ready, Freddie? All night, all night, right? <laughs> Team Steve Horton is in the back going, Spud, 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 Spud. What hasn't he done? Right? It, it, it's so uh, such a such an honor to, to recognize him. Arlen Orchard, former CEO and general manager at Smud. Uh, where he led with a heart for improving the company and improving the community as a whole. So How do I know Arlen? I don't really know him. No, I'm just joking. I'm uh, his son, um, so I've known him. Pretty now that I'm some I five dollars, folks. Let's give a lot of love, Christopher Cam Blotch at five hundred. We're at twenty-two thousand. We've got Jeffrey Einhorn at a thousand. Jennifer Restivo at a hundred. From John Cadigan at a thousand dollars. Thank you very much, John. Yes, yes Brian Tarvel came in at twenty-seven fifty. Yes. Here we go. I got Brian at twenty-seven fifty. Let's go three thousand dollars. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Doug Berman, yes. It's an honor to be here with you. All right, so I'm going to come back to you here, and I'm back. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, yeah, Stephen, <laughs> that's a good comment in the, the chat. That's funny. Um, yeah. So basically, what you saw there, there, I kind of gave you a quick idea of some things. Um, one of it was obviously. Uh, there's co-host many times and there's a chat bar where people engaging. That's one of the really important pieces to a virtual or hybrid event is the chat bar. It just creates a positive guest experience. I actually have some stats uh, from some auctions across the country with other auctioneers that have shown that the higher engaged in a chat bar is, the more funds a um, nonprofit or organization raises. So you saw the chat bar there. You also saw pre-recorded videos. Uh, we have live speakers, and then you saw a little bit of a fund to need and a little bit of the live auction and how that works. So um, I love this here. Peter, do we need to have a sim semi-manic style as an MC to make watch parties work? Um, Peter, let me know what semi-manic. Um, not sure what manic, what you're referring to there. Do we need to have MC to make? Oh, dynamic? Oh, hyperactive. Okay, got it. Uh, no, no. The watch party, the watch parties work. It's uh, really how you set those up and set the marketing up to create those. So essentially what you're doing, what I like to share is each board member of the nonprofit or organization has their own watch party and, and or maybe, you know, five to 10 other staff member or staff or community folks, whoever wants to organize one, they're happy to do it. So they organize a watch party. They invite four or five couples or friends or whatever. And then they all decide they're going to meet at a house or they're going to meet at a restaurant or somewhere. And then you set up a live stream of the event where you go onto a smart TV or Apple TV or something, and you're able to put up the YouTube onto a TV. You could also do it on a laptop or anything else. Um, just best situation is to have it on a TV. Um, and then you create the watch parties there in terms of, you know, animated, I have different personalities and tones for different events. Uh, sometimes I'm, you know, a lot of times I'm high energy. You have to have a different skill set when you're on virtual versus in person to be able to engage with folks. Um, you have to create emotion and create energy that is much different than in person. Uh, my energy in person is obviously high energy, but it's not as dynamic uh, or over the top uh, as a virtual event because you're really trying to engage. Um, Adi here said, what equipment do you need to set up a watch party? Uh, good question. Um, I mean, you don't really, you don't need any equipment, essentially. You could do it on a laptop uh, to have a watch party. Um, if you have a big screen TV, that's a good approach to it just makes it fun for people to sit around a couch or sit in a backyard. They're all on their phones and they're watching a TV, just like you would go to the movie theaters and watch a big screen or something like that. Actually, since there's been so many questions on watch parties, I'll show you a couple more photos of some watch parties that I have here. Um, and it'll give you a better idea of what those are about. Let me pull that up here. One second. Photos. 
Watch parties. Got it. Okay. I'll share with you some photos here of some watch parties. Share screen. Sharing my screen. Okay. I think I shared my screen here. Got it. Cool. So let's pull up some watch parties. And got to go slideshow here. Okay. All right. So can you see my screen, Stephen? Awesome. So here's some watch parties. These were some folks at home. This was a small gathering. There was six people here. They're watching the TV in the backyard. They've got some drinks, appetizers. Their phones are out. They're bidding. Show you some more. This was some catered meals from Bennett's at a watch party. You'll see the TV screens in the back right corner. There's a couch. These are all individual meals. Uh, some drinks at a watch party. Watch party. They made it fun. Did some pictures. An outdoor setting here. Uh, here's a good shot here. This is a breast cancer event where they had five or six tables. People spread out. They're on their phones bidding and they're watching the TV in the back. Um, that's kind of the equipment question in terms of setting it up. This here's another good shot where you got people outside eating and then there's a TV screen at the end of it. They're bidding from their phones. I'm kind of like that. So Anywho, I'll bring it back here. See how we're doing. Stop share. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's a few things on the digital fundraising in terms of the watch parties. Feel free. Any questions that you have, chime in. Um, I'm happy to answer anything that you have. But um, I'll share with you a little bit more. Some keys to success with virtual fundraising events. Uh, one of the most important things is to have kind of a timeline of the different things that you'll need. Um, and I've created actually a timeline for folks. It's a checklist of basically everything that needs to be set up. <coughs> Pardon me. As you set up a hybrid or virtual event, uh, a lot of folks in terms of where we're headed are planning on um, in-person only or hybrid uh, for the future. Um, there's a, there's still virtual fundraising events that are going on. Those are things that folks have planned six to 12 months out. I mean, I you typically partner with a nonprofit for anywhere from six to 12 months setting up an event, whether it's in person or hybrid or whatnot. And so, um, we're still doing some, I have virtual events two this week and two next week that we're, we've been planning them for six to 12 months ahead of time. We didn't know kind of when things were going to happen. So, um, that's kind of where things are at. But a lot of folks in the fall are planning to go to in-person or hybrid. Um, I've got quite a few hybrids for September and October that people are, are putting together. So, um, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing to take away is having a checklist and a timeline of setting up a virtual event um, or hybrid event. The marketing is so, so very important uh, in terms of the marketing that you do. I would like to say that marketing collateral would be six months, three months, two months, one month, and then each week leading up to the event. And then uh, typically about two to three days before the event, you want to go pretty hard on the virtual side of things, uh, especially if you're not charging a ticket price. And there's a lot of things that you could have questions about with virtual fundraising events, but um, tickets, you know, if you're, if you're not charging, then you have to do even more marketing because um, people don't have, you know, necessarily, they're not coming to an event. They're, they're, not, does, they're not actually going to physically go somewhere. So they have to be prepped. And a lot of things need to happen for that to work uh, with a virtual event. So um, that's a, a couple key tips there is the marketing is important. The sponsorships, a lot of times folks that when they started to transition into virtual events, they got a little... Uh, they thought we probably shouldn't ask for as much in sponsorships because it's virtual. And a lot of times people, when they're first, we're going into a virtual event, we're kind of thinking, oh, this is virtual. It's not going to be the same as in person. Well, yes, it's different than an in-person event, but you're still able to fundraise just as much or more with, uh, in person or with virtual or hybrid events. Um, I mean, out of the 60 that I've done over half of them have been record breaking events ever for nonprofits. 
Um, and, you know, 10 or 20 of them were just as much, you know, within a couple thousand dollars. Um, the UCP event that we just did was a huge event. Um, and so, yeah, and I'll kind of actually share with you uh, a different setup. This was actually from a million dollar event that I just recently did. And this will share with you something, a totally different perspective on how virtual can be. Um, it's a different setup and it actually shows you some people in the room. Uh, it wasn't necessarily hybrid, but it was, um, it had a different setup. So this will show you a couple different camera angles of, uh, let me key it up here. So that's just a different couple camera angles. Um, bring you back here. So yeah. Oh, Megan, I love the comment in the chat bar. Uh, UCP was the second highest in donations in the history of the event. So uh, yeah, the UCP event has been happening for a, many years. Um, Megan, if you want to maybe share with us there, but I know it's been going on for a long time. Um, so and the other thing is, is folks are being just as philanthropic now, um, you know, more than ever. I mean, people thought, you know, when we first started to do virtual fundraising events that, oh, OK, you know, it's because it's new and it's a novelty that people want to get excited and get about it. But um, what we've done is continuously evolved to make events better and better and better for virtual hybrid setting. Actually, I'll show you a cool feature that we just started actually last week for the Sacramento Tree Foundation. I don't have this one teed up quite yet, but actually, actually I do here. One second. Let me share my screen again. Share, share, and I'll show you some cool features that this shows you kind of next level what we're doing with virtual hybrid events. So... Check this out. These are some cool new things. This is actually onto a YouTube live stream converted through a Zoom. And we're able to show watch parties. So I think you can see this here now. So let me share with you a quick sample. Hey, yes. Three, three, One, two, three. Woohoo! So everybody here is on gallery view of a Zoom, but it's also being embedded into a YouTube. So that way, you know, you're now you're doing a virtual fundraising event where you've got all of these folks that see themselves. Um, this corner, the I'll actually share with you another setup too here in a second. Cheers, Ray. We want to give a take it away. We're so happy. Oh, okay. So, so right here. Huge shout out to our title sponsor. Seth. So as I'm recognizing our sponsor, this is on the right hand side of the screen a watch party. And so watch what happens here in a second as we recognize a sponsor in a virtual event. This is a pretty cool setup that we just started evolving. In. Always, every single week we're learning better, growing, evolving with virtual or hybrid events. Sacramento Association of Realtors. Look at the watch party. Look at them. I, oh, yeah. Hey, Sacramento Association of Realtors. For Sacramento Tree Foundation. So kind of gives you an idea. Um, like I said, there's a lot more I can share with you, but uh, whatever you want, I'm happy to kind of go in any direction you have questions for. Um, Steven said, how does the integration work? Does Zoom have the functionality built in? Yeah, it's actually through um, a software called OBS. That's Open Broadcaster Software, which is where we take uh, capture a device where we capture a Zoom and then put that into a software system that then gets outputted to YouTube, uh, five Facebook Lives, and Zoom all at the same time simultaneously. So um, I know that might have sounded like a lot of gibberish, but basically what that means is we're taking in different devices and different captures of different um, scenes and then mixing and matching and embedding those and coding those into a software system. So. I'll be honest with you, before COVID, you know, I this was a lot of stuff I had to learn. And I've learned a lot of things in the last 18 months about 
all this stuff that I had no idea before. So, hey, Stephen, good to see you there. Thanks for asking, uh, answering that question. I uh, we we are trying to come up with some ideas on how to create uh, hybrid events and also uh, hybrid learning. So, uh, understanding that you can do that through Zoom is uh, pretty powerful. Yeah, when you're doing a hybrid event, the thing that I would encourage, there's a couple different ways to do hybrid. Actually, let me share with you a do another piece that I've created here. Um, let me pull this up. Let me give me one second here. Hybrid. Here it is. All right. And I'm happy to kind of share this out with folks if they're interested. But here's some ideas of how hybrid could potentially work for you. There's some different options. Um, let me pull this around. So on here, what you'll see is uh, some different ways to do a hybrid event. Um, there's two different, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, there's one event or two events. And one event, there's a couple different ways. You would be um, in person with people uh, with pre-recorded content. You could be in a studio. You could also do one event with two hosts where, um, you know, like an auctioneer is out on the floor with all the people in person. But then you also have another host for everybody that's online because the idea with hybrid is that you want to give a really good guest experience to both people. When you're doing hybrid, you don't want the people that are virtual or online to just feel like they're watching a still camera of everybody that's in person. And so you want it to be just as dynamic, just as we've done all of the virtual events in this past year, it's the same setup. You're basically giving the same amount of energy and love to folks that are virtual or hybrid um, as you would to the in-person folks. So it's not just a camera in the back of the room and that's gonna be our people online are gonna see that. It's a lot more extensive than that. So uh, you could have two, uh, two hosts, one is for virtual and one is for in-person. Also, the call that I had this morning was for a hybrid event in September where I'm going to do it all on my own. So I'll be managing all the folks that are in person, and then I'll be having somebody that is bidding for the people online that's in the room as well. So they're going to raise their paddle when there's somebody that's bidding on a live auction item at home. And then people can also be watching the live event and donating to the fund to need. The fund to need, uh, as Megan would know from our virtual event, is, and for those that may not know, a fund need is where people give money towards a nonprofit or cause, uh, just a straight cash donation. And so they can do that onto a software. I'll show you a different setup here in a second after I go through hybrid, but here's some different ways to do a hybrid event. You can have a small gathering where there's 50 or less, and you could do that in a studio. Um, you could also have it in a venue, um, some different ways to set that up. You could also do two events. And what that might look like is potentially having two, having a virtual event on the same day as an in-person event. So maybe you have a virtual event at 9 or 12 in the morning, 9 a.m. or 12 p.m., and then you have an evening in-person event. Um, or you could have an in-person event, say, on a Saturday, and then the following, say, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday evening, you could do a virtual event where you're able to then reach a lot more folks and the other thing about the virtual side into the future is that it's going to give folks a lot of opportunity um, to be a part of something um, in a different way. So let me share with you one more thing so you can start to understand money and dollars. I'll share with you one final piece here, how this actually comes together. So there's software companies. There's about 20 or so software companies out there that have different platforms this is just one of them. This is a platform called Greater Giving. Basically, you set up a uh, software where people can register their credit card, and then they can begin to bid on live and silent auction items. And they can also donate to a fund in need, which is where they give out cash donations. So for example, in a virtual or hybrid event for the cash donation fund in need portion, people would go to this link on their mobile phone, whether they're, um, they could be virtual or not there in person. They get a software link kind of like this. They watch the live stream right here on the bottom right. This would be a live stream of the event, kind of like this. So you're watching this live stream down here of the virtual in-person event, and then you click on donate now, 
the live stream is still showing up over here. And then you can donate over here. I'm just going to turn that off for now. But for example, if I was going to donate $1,000, this is fake money. This is a demo link. So I donated $1,000. And then it would, uh, let me refresh. So then you'll see something like this where it says auctioneer Freddy Silvera just gave $1,000. Let's say I wanted to give 500 And so then you'd go and then boom, you'd have 500 right there. So this people were, they donate to the fund and need. That'll be the same for in-person hybrid events. They just donate to the fund and need. I'll recognize all the bid cards in the room. I'm not sure what happened there. It looks like a uh, friend dropped off there. Um, since we are getting around 12.30 or so, uh, I'll go ahead and just kind of wrap up email to everyone with some of the uh, tips that Freddie wanted to share with everyone. Um, thank you all for showing up to TechSoup, uh, Stack, uh, I'm sorry, TechSoup Connect Sacramento. Uh, we're going to look at maybe doing these in person moving forward just because uh, people are a little tired of uh, Zoom calls, but hey, Freddie. Hey, like there. Sorry. Sorry. I, hopefully, I didn't lose you for too long. Uh, just a second. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I think I must have clicked a button or something. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, a little bit about kind of hybrid. Um, I'm happy to answer any specific questions that you have. I can, I can go in any direction that you'd like. I've done a probably... 25 webinars with Steven with Impact Foundry. So I'm not sure if there's specific questions that you have. Um, I'm happy to answer anything that you might. So just let me know. I know we talked a little bit about watch parties. Um, happy to share with you kind of any, in terms of the, some things that I've learned, um, some things that have kind of worked well and some things that have had opportunities for growth. Um, Things that go really well with virtual or hybrid is marketing is really important. Um, sponsorships are really important. And uh, there's a question here in the chat. Uh, there Are there guidelines on how auctioneering works? Uh, I'm in South Africa and I've never seen this type of fundraising uh, on a virtual platform, I mean. Um, yeah, um, Adi, I happy to share with you, um, you know, anything that you might, you know, want to want to know about a virtual event. Uh, I'm happy to walk through. Uh, Dr. Stanley said, um, greater giving high fee and long-term contract. Correct. Yeah. Dr. Stanley, there's a lot of different softwares out there and there's a lot of different ones. I just kind of showed that one as an example, how greater giving works is, it's usually a one-year contract where you can use them as many times as you want for any type of events. Um, and then you have credit card processing fees. So um, there's a lot of different ones out there. There's One Cause, Give Smart, Greater Giving, Silent Auction Pro, Handbid. Um, there's a ton of them. Octria. Uh, those are just kind of on the top of my head. Um, so... Uh, there's a lot of different ones. You can get ones where it's a one-time event. You can get one where it's a long-term contract. You can get ones where there's you you have the donor. Also, it comes down to features and benefits. Uh, Dr. Stanley, which one is a favorite? Uh, honestly, it comes down to what you want, are looking to do. Um, you know, are, are you concerned with budget? Are you wanting it to be an easy process for the donor to register? The other thing is, is you want to make it as simple as possible. Um, and Adi, I'll put the contact information in the chat there for you. But yeah, you know, honestly, I really like um, if it comes down to budget, definitely. So if it comes to budget, um, uh, I would probably recommend uh, Silent Auction Pro uh, or SchoolAuction.net or Octria, uh, those are some of the cheap, the less expensive, cheaper ones um, that can kind of do the job. Um, it just depends on really what you're trying to do. I mean, there's, there, it, 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 you know, it can, if it, you know, budget, yes. Um, 
if you want to have texting capabilities, if you want to have a link where you can have the live stream embedded so that it's all on one link. Um, and I don't want to kind of, I'm not, my job is just to share with you all the examples. I'm not trying to kind of say this one or that one. Um, I like greater giving a lot, um, partly because I've used it a lot and I know it really well. Um, I also like one cause, um, I'm this week I'm using give smart. I'm using give smart on Thursday and I'm using school auction.net on Friday. So yeah, there's a lot of different ones out there, but, um, yeah, uh, Steven, yeah, I'll, I'll put that here, put my email in the chat for you. Yeah. Thanks Freddie. I always uh, appreciate learning uh, some things from the expert. Yeah. I mean, you know, I just, you know, I spent a lot of time on this, you know, you can imagine for me where, you know, this is my job. I do this full time. I help nonprofits. And when COVID hit, you know, I literally had nothing It went to zero. So, you know, it was figure it out or get another job somewhere else. So, you know, I, you know, I spent a lot of time. I was like, 80 hours a week for six weeks in a row talking to anybody and everybody and learning about tech and learning about how to make it, you know, easy for the donor. Um, and then as you do events, you start to learn, okay, this worked and that didn't work. Um, and you know, and then when there's just different ways to do things. And so now I feel really confident and confident with virtual, very confident. Um, and with hybrid, you know, very confident with that as well. Um, it's just a matter now of how do we make it better? How do we continuously evolve to make it a better experience? Um, you know, at, at first we had just white backdrops. We had a we had a green screen with a white backdrop, and I started to hear from a bunch of nonprofits. They were watching some of the videos, and they're like, "Ugh, I don't really like the white backdrop." Honestly, we never really thought of that. We were just like. Okay. And so then we started to create better backdrops. And then we had, you know, we were, had curtains and we had green screens and then we had no, then we just did it, uh, in, at a outside venue. And I've done a lot, I've done it in an art gallery before where the backdrop was the art gallery and we were inside of there. So, uh, done a lot of different ways of it. Uh, another question here is, is there any of these software companies offer special rates for nonprofits? Um, maybe, um, I, I know that I am able to get some special rates because I'm partners with quite a few of them. Um, you know, so I can get you a discount there. Um, but you know, these are designed to help generate lots of funds for folks. And, um, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's helping to fundraise a lot of money and you get what you pay for. So, um, you know, I've done things for, I've done things where folks have, you know, got creative ways to figure out software. I've been able to run out of a chat bar. So this chat bar that we have right here where Dr. Stanley and Steven and Adi are at, we've done a whole event, fundraised um, hundreds of thousands of dollars out of a chat bar. So, you know, there's different ways to be creative and think. Um, is it the best solution? No. Is it cheap? Yes. Um, does it work? Yes. It also comes down to the process of your donor experience. You then have a lot of back work that you have to do. You might have random people that donate or bid on items in a chat bar that you have to then go and get that money from. So if they say, I'm going to donate $100 in the chat bar, you have to have some type of plan in place to be able to contact them. Um, and if it's on YouTube live, it could just be any random person. And so there's a lot of things that have to go into making certain things work. So, um, thank you a lot so of much, things. <laughs> yeah. Let me know, Thanks Steve. So much for uh, letting us learn on, uh, or this day back after a three day weekend on our lunch break. Yeah. Anytime. Happy to help. Greatly appreciate it. And for everyone else, uh, we'll be putting the recording on YouTube, passing it out to folks so we can get Freddie some more exposure for the excellent work that he does. And uh, we really appreciate everyone uh, coming to the event today. And thank you so much, Freddie. Thank you. Appreciate it, Stephen. Have a good one, everyone. Take care.